Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about Google Search Console Insights. Insights is essentially a new dashboard that was just unveiled by Google with the intention of making it a little bit easier for people to understand the performance and health of their website. Now this dashboard is powered by two things in most cases. It's always powered by Google Search Console and sometimes it's supplemented with data from Google Analytics. Now I'm going to recommend before you really dig in, you make sure you've verified that you're the owner of the web property, both on Search Console and Analytics. I'll link to resources below if you need a walkthrough for that, but it's going to be necessary to have both of those if you want to have an experience similar to what I'm going to show on the screen today. So it's probably worth addressing, who is the intended audience for this new tool? And I think the answer is essentially anyone who might feel overwhelmed by the sort of plethora of information that's provided by Google Search Console and Google Analytics. You know, those are tools that, especially on the side of analytics, definitely require some training in order to make sense of and fully utilize. Whereas this experience is very uh, kind of reduced and simplified. And that's a double-edged sword because there's a lot of data that you can't get from Search Console Insights that you can get from the two sources of data that drive it. So in my mind, let's say that you are a marketing manager and maybe you manage a, a team of digital marketers and you don't have someone on your team who's really an analytics specialist uh, who can like generate you a weekly report or something like that. This might be a great tool for you. Um, and so going into this walkthrough, I'm going to assume that you don't have a ton of technical knowledge or a lot of analytics knowledge. We'll take a very beginner oriented approach here. Okay, let's dig in. So here we are. Let's open up Google Search Console Insights. Now, the example website we're going to be using today is just our own website. So we are a small, primarily B2B marketing agency uh, and have you know, a fairly young website. Um, so immediately we see a view that looks like this, just a simple vertical scrolling type of dashboard. Now, the first metric we see at the top here, all time page views, this is what you might call a vanity metric. It's not really actionable in any way, um, but seeing the number go up over time feels good. It's kind of like a, like, like a hit counter in the early days of the internet. Um, I would recommend that you don't pay too much attention to that. It can be really easy to get fixated on you know, a bright blue number at the top of the page, but it's not really super useful. So I would just kind of skip over it. Now, all of the data in Search Console Insights is presented for the past 28 days. Uh, and this is one of the first things that makes it, you know, much different from say Google Analytics or traditional Google Search Console where you're always selecting the exact date range you wanna do and maybe doing year over year comparisons and things like that. Google Search Console Insights, I think, is much more of a dashboard where it's assuming past 28 days is around the time frame that you care about. So looking at the site overview, we have page views and how it's changed compared to the last period. We have average page view duration and also how that's changed. So pretty simple, you know, nice curvy graph here. Um, not really too much to dig into as far as complexity here, but I will say if for any of these, you are confused, you know, hovering over the stuff will always give you a little bit more information or definitions. There's also this little cap icon over here uh, with some more information about the data and tips on how you might use it. So that's nice and convenient. You don't have to dig through Google's documentation, which is well-written and extensive, but exists somewhere else and assumes sometimes a fair amount of background knowledge. Okay, so let's keep on moving your new content. So we're a little bit behind. We've only published one blog post in the last 28 days. We need to, we need to get our stuff together. Um, but here you can see what it is. Um, you know, by the way, whenever it's referring to pages, uh, so like whether it's here or that, that's the title tag of those pages. So, you know, that's the text that you see, uh, you know, in, in the tab at the top of your browser window, or when you do a Google search, that's the title tag. And that's how it refers to your pages in this. Um, and if you look below all of these, you'll always see, you know, the number of views in the last 28 days and then the average time on the page. And if the, if the view count is really low, sometimes it can't calculate that average. So if you see a dash, that's just what that means. So that's new content for the last 28 days, but let's look at most popular content. Okay, so for most popular content, you know, we can see what the page name is. We can see top search queries. That's super, super helpful. If you want to know how people are finding you in Google, that's what you want to know. Now, if you click this arrow for any of these pages, you can get some additional data. So you can see how this page specifically performed over the last 28 days. 
you can see how people find you. So direct, generally speaking, means people just typing the URL or the domain name into their browser bar at the top of the screen, so up here. Um, or if they have it bookmarked, it might also show up as direct. Uh, you know, organic search. So that's a someone does a search in Google or Bing, and they click on one of the results. That's not an ad. That's organic search. Then referral is someone discovering that URL on another website and clicking on that link. Uh, you know, you might also find you know advertisement or PPC results in here. Uh, you know, there's there's a handful of different channels you might find, but these three plus advertising are going to be the most common. So down here, a little bit more information on the search queries that brought people to the page and the top five results, top 10 results, that sort of thing. So you can see how you're ranking in Google searches for each of these. Now, this is kind of interesting because of course, Google searches are always personalized. So when it's showing this average position and you say 2.2, you might think to yourself like, wait, there's no 2.2 position on a Google search result page. There's not, it's just the average position it was in when someone found it and clicked it. Um, so that's what that means. And you can see the number of clicks from each of these. And it's always really good to kind of have this context of, okay, we're ranking 2.2 and got 24 clicks, or we're ranking 2.4 and we only got one click. Well, why is that? That has to do with how many people are actually searching for that phrase every month. You know, if something is being searched for very often and you're all the way in position 10, you might still get a lot of clicks from it. Whereas if you're in position one for something that people barely ever look for, then not so much. Um, here you can also see referring links from other websites to this specific page. Looks like, you know, we probably have some spam here. That's pretty normal. Every website gets some spammy backlinks. Definitely don't seek them out, but if you see some, don't be surprised. Basically every website on the internet will accrue those over time. Okay, so let's go back to this main page. Um, you know, we can see most popular content. It's worth pointing out, you can flip through so you don't have to just be limited to the first three. Um, you know, if you wanted more data than this, you really got to go to Google Analytics. That's the best place to get this kind of data. You know, if you have a large website with hundreds or thousands or even millions of pages, you probably want to have someone on your team that can make use of Google Analytics and can really synthesize that data. This tool is great for small websites, maybe medium-sized websites, anything bigger than that, anything enterprise scale, you're going to want to use Google Analytics. Okay. So if we scroll down at how people find you, this is sort of a website wide view of what we just talked about for a specific page. So we can see for our website, 65% comes from organic search. That's great to see. You know, in my experience, most websites out there get at least 50% of their traffic from organic search. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, now looking at this next bit here that just says Google search, we can see, okay, Average page duration for people who found your website via Google, the number of page views, the number of clicks, um, because ultimately someone might you know click through to a page, that's a click, but then if they continue to view additional pages, that's why these two numbers might be different, the number of clicks and the number of page views. It means that some of these people, they're clicking through to that first page and then they continue exploring the website. So here we have most searched queries for the website overall. So Keyword Mixer is our number one. So we develop SEO tools that are free. People can just go to our website and use them. They don't have to log in or anything like that. And so they tend to get a lot of you know, organic search traffic and a lot of referral traffic. And one of our most popular tools is the Keyword Mixer. Another one is a SERP simulator. Don't worry if you don't know what those are. It doesn't really matter for the context of this video, but they're basically SEO tools. And so, you know, people search for that, they find us on average around position three or position eight for this, um, and they click through to those pages. So that's what that means. Going down here, we have, once again, referring links from other websites, this time to our website as a whole, rather than to a specific page like we saw in that other view. Now we can see top referring links. I think this just refers to the number of people who actually came to our website by clicking those links. You can also change this view to newest referring links. So if you're curious about, okay, well, what, what's happened in the last month? What are the new links that we're getting? This is another way to look. So we have one from a design agency that we partner with, um, as well as a couple of other websites here. So that's great. Now, this final block is something that I find kind of interesting and I didn't expect to see in here, and that's social media. So how visitors get to your site on social media. Now, this is a little bit less clear to me um, because I don't actually know for these these time metrics, is that the number of time or the amount of time that people spent on our website after clicking through from YouTube or clicking through from LinkedIn? I would assume that's what it means. 
Um, I'm assuming they're not saying people spent a minute and 27 seconds on your LinkedIn profile, because I don't think Google would want to provide us with information about user behavior on another website. Um, so maybe keep that in mind. And that's basically it as far as this main dashboard. Of course, they emphasize what I said before, if you want to get the full story, you have to use Google Analytics and Google Search Console. Um, but if you don't have those skills yet, or if you just want a quick overview, this is a great way to go. Um, this is definitely the kind of thing that we're gonna be recommending to all of our clients. If they wanna see you know, this information on you know, a daily or a weekly basis, you know, we usually provide monthly reporting to our clients, but we have some clients who like to see this stuff weekly. And so this is a very easy way to go where we don't have to necessarily build them a custom dashboard or anything like that if all they're really curious about are things like the number of page views uh, and which keywords are contributing traffic. Um, so I'd really recommend it for situations like that. So that's the basic overview. Now, as I mentioned before, this tool is brand new, which means there's a good chance they're gonna be tweaking it, changing some things, maybe clarifying things, adding things, removing things, et cetera. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some rapid changes happen with this. Um, but as it stands now, I think it's, it's a useful tool for people who, like I said before, don't have the time or the skills to really dig through Google Analytics. Um, but I'd be curious to hear what you think. You know, if you are a marketing manager or director or even a CMO, have you tried this tool? Do you find it useful? You know, feel free to leave a comment below and let us know what you think. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what the response of people in that sort of group are. Because when I come to this, you know, I'm someone with, you know, years of digital marketing experience. So I think like, oh, but I, I wish it showed conversions and conversions by channel and stuff like that um, in event tracking. But that's basically just what Google Analytics is already. So maybe that wouldn't actually, uh, you know, be super useful. But I'd love to hear your perspective on this. Uh, so we're going to be rolling out more videos like this soon. If you want to see those, you should go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you everyone for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.